everyone, this is Ellie May with Swift Creek Customs, and today I have a step-by-step -step tutorial for you on how you can create your own card design. This tutorial is going to be specific to creating this style that I'm showing on my screen that is a shaped edge text card. And yes, you are going to create it all in the Leonardo Design Studio software from scratch. So let's take a look at how we do this. We are going to cover several different tools all the way from drawing tools, drawing a line tool, changing to a score line, text tools, welding, and rotation. So let's get started. So the first thing I need to do is I'm going to open a new design mat, and then I'm going to start by drawing our card base. So for me, my card base, typically in the US, is going to be a card size of 4.25 by 5.5, but you could create this in any size that you would like. So I'm going to start with the draw shapes tool in the bottom left corner. And I'm going to simply, I can just draw any size rectangle or square that I would like. Now the color is going to be under the properties and you can change that. And I'm going to need to change it in this example a few different times just for you to be able to see this a little bit easier. So I am simply going to start out with a lighter shade of pink and we'll go from there. So. The scale tools in your properties panel on the right hand side, you have your width and your height boxes at the bottom of the properties panel where you can adjust to make a very specific size of what you would like. On the right hand side of those scale tools is your lock aspect ratio. If it is locked and I change one dimension on this card, if I change this to 8.5, it's going to automatically adjust proportionally the other setting dimension on the scale tool. If I want to, you can see that my card base here, I put in the 8.5 for the full length of my card, but that only gives me the 4.466 according to the shape that I drew. And that is because that my aspect ratio is locked. It's going to adjust both of those proportionally to each other. If I want to adjust only one, I'm going to uncheck that lock. It's going to open, and then I can adjust each of these separately. So if I type in 5.5, this is going to give me the card base that I want for a 5 by 5, 5.5 inch by 4.25 card. I can go ahead and lock that again because I have my set dimensions and I do not want those to change. Next, I'm going to use the draw pen tool, and this is going to be, allow us to draw a line. I'm going to exaggerate this line just a little bit so it's easier to see on the screen. You can see my cursor changed to a sort of pen tip. I'm going to click on my design mat and hold my shift key down, and then I'm going to, it's going to allow me to draw a perfect straight line. This will rotate it at 45 degree angles as long as my shift key is held down. I simply want a straight line. So I'm going to then click at the bottom to add a second point on that line. And if you want to end your line, you're going to right click and choose done. This is going to give me the score line that I would like. Now it is a solid cut line currently you can use the, that as a score line and simply come over here and change your default cut to a six, second different cut style. So I would in general use a full cut just because I've had a couple bugs in the fold score, but you could definitely try the fold score line if you're using this as a solid cut line. Now I come from the silhouette background and I, don't mind the dashed line, so I'm going to show you how to do that. But if you want a solid score line, you would choose a different cut setting here. And then on the send tab, you have to set that up as a separate cut setting. I will link in the description below on how you can do that for a video for kiss cut versus die cut. The process is the exact same. I'm going to leave it as the default cut. And then I'm actually going to change this line color here and we're going to make it black for the time being so you can see this. So I prefer a dashed line as the score line. I'm going to choose solid line here and choose large dash. 
Now, in this case, since I'm using the dashed line, I don't have to adjust cut settings for two different cut styles. I can simply use the same cut style and it's going to cut a perforated or dashed line where I place that. Now my cut line here, my score line, I have exaggerated it for the video, but I can also come in here and adjust it manually, or I could use the scale tools at the bottom of the properties panel and I could adjust this to 5.5. That's going to be the height of my card. And then what I wanna do is I'm going to left click and drag across both of those. And I'm going to use my align tools in the bottom toolbar, I'm going to center, and then I'm going to center to the middle as well. Now in this case, you can see here that my score line, let me zoom in here just a little bit. My score line is at the very edge of my card. And this is just a personal preference when you are designing. I don't like it to hit the edge of my card. So I'm just going to manually grab that, drag it in just a little bit, and I can adjust this as I choose to have that score line be exactly what I like. And you'll see as I do that, it's going to adjust that dash line accordingly. When I do that, I'm going to then left click and drag across both of them again and I want to do the center align to the middle again just to get it as centered as possible. It's complete personal preference there but that's how I do it. Then I'm going to select both again left click and drag across both of them and this time I want to group them together and we're going to group and ungroup a couple times in this video because of the way that when you weld things together if something is grouped together, it's going to weld everything. And that's not what I want. So pay attention as I do this because I will be grouping and ungrouping. So I'm going to select group. So now this all moves as one object. My score line will stay in the exact place I want it on my card base, which is what I want. So let's zoom back out here. And then the next tool that I'm going to use is the text tool. So I'm going to click on the T in my toolbar and I am going to select a font. You can see I already have impact as selected because I was testing this before I record it. So I'm simply going to highlight the text and I'm going to type birthday, all in caps. And I'm using a bold font for this. Bold fonts are going to work better for a shaped edge card than say a scripty font. That doesn't mean that a scripty font won't work, but I would suggest using a bold font first to get the technique down then you can play with your fonts. There are thousands, millions of different font styles, which means that you have so many different options, but not all fonts work well for all projects. For instance, if I wanted to select a different font, I would simply come over here. I'm going to click on a font name to highlight it, and then I'm going to start typing a font style name if I know which one I want. So if I wanted to change this to Samantha, I'm going to type, start typing in SAM, and you'll notice that it jumps to that particular font name. So it's an easy way to go through your fonts if you know the name of the font style that you're looking for. So I'm gonna do that one more time because I'm, I'm going to go back. You have to select the name of the text, start typing, and when you start typing, it's going to change it to the name of that font or any font that starts with those letters. However, Here's a note, if you pause in your typing, then it's going to designate that you're done and it's going to start over. So I'll demonstrate this for you to know what I mean. If I were to choose, let's just scroll all the way back up here. If I were to choose this font, for instance, and I wanted to select impact, if I type I and then I hesitate and I wait and I type M, that little delay in my typing, the software picks up on and it thinks I'm starting a new font style. So if I want to select a font name, I need to continue the typing. So IMP brings me to impact. That's just a little more extra tidbit in there. So the next thing I'm going to do is click apply. And you can see it put my text on top of my card base, that's okay, and it's purple. To, in order to see this, I'm going to change this to black. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a copy because I want to use the same font for another part of the card. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate. If I select this font style, I'm going to use the green rotate at the top here. If I simply select it and move my mouse, it's going to rotate in increments of 15 degrees. If I want to freely rotate, I'm going to hold my shift key down and it can freely rotate. And at the top above that little green circle, you can actually see the degree of rotation. If I want it to rotate by a certain increment, so I personally want this one to rotate to 90 degrees. So I'm going to select the green rotate option, going to move my mouse to the 90 degree mark. Makes it very, very simple for rotating. And then what I want to do is I want to bring this up here and I want this text to span the height of my card. Now I could simply just grab the corner bounding box here and I could drag it out to get it as close as possible. Or I can once again use these height and width options. Now since I rotated this text, I want to show you something that I found. When you have your object selected, you can look to see where this green rotate is. Even though I rotated my text to 90 degrees to the right in the software, it is simply rotated. It did not change the aspect of the width and height. And I wanna show you what happens here. So if I were to change my width, say I wanted it to be 5.5 high, that is not the width here. So if I change this to 5.5, it's actually going to automatically change the aspect so my height is 5.5 because that is the up and down measurement. Even though I rotated it, it's the up and down, that's the height of my card. That's not what I want, I don't need 26 inches. This was something I just found when I was testing for the video. So what I want is I actually want it to be 5.5 and now it's changed that width to 5.5. I know it sounds kind of funny, but just play around with it because it'll make sense because this has, it'll make sense the more you play with it. Um, this is still the top in the software of this design. I've only rotated it 90 degrees. It doesn't change how the software sees it. So I just want my font, my text to span from the top to the bottom. And I have now made it 5.5 inches. So that is how long it is. I'm going to come over here, I'm going to select my select tool and you could manually move this around and try and place it exactly where you want it. But the easier way to do it is to use the tools in the software. I'm going to left click, drag across my card base and my text and I'm going to once again use the align tools in my bottom toolbar. So I'm going to align to the middle and it was pretty close already, but then I'm going to align to the right edge and that's going to bring it to the very edge of my card base. Now here is where we are going to use the ungroup. I don't want my score line to move when I alter the card base. So I'm going to right click and choose ungroup, but I wanna make sure that only my card base is selected. So I'm going to click off of it to deselect it and back on the card base only. And then I'm going to right click and choose ungroup. Now, if I click off of it and click back on it, and if I were to select the score line, you can see that my bounding box, my selection box is only around the score line. So it is separated from my card base currently. I don't want it to move. I'm going to click on the card base and I'm going to grab this right corner bounding box here or right middle bounding box. And I'm simply going to move that in. And this is how we're getting that shaped edge card. And depending on the text that you use, you can make all kinds of different cards with this. Merry Christmas, happy birthday, you could do a hello, you could do a congratulations, you could do all kinds of different cards with this. You could also do scrapbook layouts with this. You could do 
all de home decor items, you know, pages that you want to print and put into a photo um, frame. You could do all kinds of things with this. So this is just one thing that you could do with a shaped edge. But I still need my card base and my words to be overlapping. I'm going to left click and select the card base and the text. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose pads and weld. That is going to weld the text to my card base. Now what you'll notice here is that my score line disappeared only because my score line is black. And so it changed it to black when I welded it. I'm going to simply change this to a brighter pink just so you can see it. And then when you weld, it's going to bring all those objects to the front. So my score line is there, it's just hiding behind. So I'm going to right click and choose order and send to back. And then that brings my score line up front. It would still cut if I didn't move anything, but I just can't see it. So then I'm simply going to left click, drag across the score line and the card base, right click and choose group or control G for a shortcut. So now I have created my shaped edge card base. This is the text that I made a copy of. I'm simply going to double click on it to bring up the text properties and I can then type happy or whatever you would like to create with that card. Now I am going to change this to a different color because the way Leonardo Design Studio software works is it works, it cuts basically by color. So I'm going to bring this up here and then I can adjust it as I desire, make the text bigger or smaller, and I'm simply going to make copies of it. And this is a complete personal preference on how you finish out your card. So now that I made one copy, I want two more copies. So I selected both of those, Control C, Control V, move those down, and then I simply need one. So I'm gonna Control C, Control V again. And then an easy way to select just my happy, one of the ways you can either click on one and hold your shift key down and keep on clicking on each one, or left click at the top, drag all the way across to the bottom, hold my shift key down and click on the card base. And it's going to deselect the card base and happy is all that's left selected. And then I'm going to use my align tools and in this case, I want to use the arrange and align objects. I want to distribute vertically. So it spaces those out exactly perfectly. And then I'm going to group those together. So control G or right click and choose group. Now I have three different colors on my card. So I'm gonna show you a couple options when you go to cut. I want my card base and my score line to cut on the same mat. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. I could come over here for, and I could open my layers panel and you can see here I have one grouping. That's going to be my card and my score line. And I have a second grouping and if I wanted to, I could rename this. So this is my card base. And I have a second grouping, that's my happy. If I simply wanted to hide this layer, I could hide it, click on send design, and I'm going to choose don't separate by color. This means that it's going to cut every single cut line in one go. So if I click send, then I have my card base and my score line all on the same mat. If I go back here, I do wanna point out, if I click send again, I currently, I sent it with move each color to the layer of origin. So if I go back here, it's going to move that to the origin that the Caesar machines start at, which is your bottom left corner. Now, another way you can do this, so then once I'm done with that, I could go in here to the layers panel hide the card base layer and choose happy and send that to cut. So I have happy and it's ready to cut out of whatever material I would like. 
Now, another way you can do that if you don't want to turn cut lines on and off in the layers panel is me personally, I would just move happy off my design mat and I'm going to click send design and I'm going to have don't separate by color checked and then send. It's going to cut out the happy or it's going to cut out the card base. Back to design, move this off and move this back on. And that's how I've done it for years. So I could simply do that. But I wanna show you something else. So if I undo this and bring everything back together, if I come to send design and I simply, if I say don't separate by color, the way the card is set up right now, if I click send, it's going to cut everything out of the same go when you send it to your machine. So happy is actually going to be cut out of the card. And I will cut one like this and show it because it's actually, a could be a really cool design. You would just have to layer, it's going to show the layer of color that's behind um, the, when you fold your card. So you would cut an insert, or I would cut an insert and place that behind the happy and it would be a different look. So there's all kinds of things that you can do with this. But if you send it this way, it's going to cut everything all at one go. So if you're looking for that layered aspect, this isn't gonna be what you need. So if I come back out here, and if I send design, if I don't separate by color, and I click send, what you're going to notice is that it's going to separate everything. And in this case, it's not going to work because my score line is not in the middle of my card base. So you want to be very careful when you're designing and really the way to learn is to just play with it and to watch your machine, to watch what is showing on the Leonardo Send tab and how it has that broken up. Because it has these two designated as two different colors, it shows it as two different cuts. So on that note, I'll show you something else. See, there's all, once you go down the rabbit hole, there's all kinds of things here. If I were to select my card base and my score line, and I come back here to my properties and my color picker, if I changed both of those to the same color, then when I click on send, now I can't see my score line on the screen here. If I click on send and I choose send as is, now it's going to place that score line on my card base because they are the same color. So then I can cut the card base with happy birthday or with birthday, and then I could cut my happy in two different colors, two different sends through the machine. Now, here's another one for you. See, rabbit hole. When you go down that rabbit hole, I'm gonna hit Control Z to undo. Oop, I don't know what happened there. Um, let's see, edit, redo, edit, redo. Okay, it, it, I don't know what happened. Something goofy, so I just redid everything and now my score line's a different color. Back to where I was. So the other option that you have, I could move my card base down to the bottom. I could move my happy up here in the top. When I click on send design, I'm going to, hold on one second, I'm gonna hit cancel. I still have happy selected. So I'm gonna actually show you two more things. If I click on send design, if I chose selected artwork only, happy is the item I have selected. So it's going to, if I click send, it's going to put happy only on my cut mat. If I go back here and I were to select birthday, choose send, selected artwork only, choose send. Now, because they're two different colors, they show up in two different uh, cutting mats. That's not going to work in this case. You would have to change the colors to be the same. Or I can come up here, choose send design. All artwork that fits on a page, you're going to notice they both show. Keep relative positions of each layer or use current 
mat location. So you have several different options that you can choose. So if I choose keep relative positions of each layer, choose send. Now it's going to show me three different mats that I would have to select. It does not move my score line, so my score line is going to cut where it's supposed to, but I will have to send it twice. I would have to send it first to either cut the score line or first to send the card base, and then I'd have to send it a second time to complete the second cut because they're two different colors. And then it has my happy as well. It's going to put that happy up in the corner exactly where I have it placed. If I come back to design, really I didn't know I was going to share as much in this video as I am, but if I once again select send design, Use current mat and page location. If I choose send, you're going to notice it still separates it out because they're three different colors, but my score line is in the correct place. And then I could cut the score line and then I could cut my card base. Then I also have the happy in the top left corner of my cutting mat. So I'm going to come back to design. Now, if I do not have you completely confused I don't know how else I could confuse you, but what I really want to stress here is, is that there are many different options in the Leonardo Design Studio software. If you look at this send tab, you have several different options and depending on what option you select is how that will perform and how it will cut. Most times, if you simply just read the wording that's going to explain how it's going to react on the send tab. So one more little demo for you. I'm going to select my score line and my card base. I'm going to change it to the same color again. Again, I can't see that score line, but Leonardo Design Studio sees color. That's how it designates cut lines. So if I click send design and I could use current mat and page location, or even keep relative positions of each layer. Well, let's take a look at both. Keep relative position, send. Now, because I have two colors only, it's going to keep that relative position. Happy is in the top left, birthday is in the bottom right when I go to cut. If I go back to send design, the other option I have is use current mat and page location. I could choose send and then I get the same result because they're two of the same two colors. I only have two colors. So my score line and my card base is the same color. So that's how Leonardo Design Studio sees it. If I come back to design, did you know there's more? Uh, if I click on send design, now if I choose don't separate by color and I choose send, then they're both going to show up on the same design mat. I would place my material that I would like happy cut out of in the top left corner here, and I would place the card that I, the cardstock I would like cut it to cut this birthday out of in the bottom left corner. And I will show you exactly that here in just a second. Okay, so I am going to send this as I showed at the last end of the video. So I have it all set up to go on one cutting mat. My card base is at the bottom. My happy is at the top. So I'm going to send this through all in one pass. Just going to simply load my mat. Sorry for kicking the camera. Position my blade housing in the bottom left corner. And then I'm going to make sure I have the cut settings. So I want to increase this. I'm choosing cardstock. And I'm simply going to select a setting I've used before. And then I'm going to send to Juliet.
Now I want to add a couple more tips in here. I had no idea when I started this video how much I was going to try to share. Um, a couple things I noticed with cutting cardstock. So I simply selected, you'll see these little pieces falling out, a, I selected a setting that I've used before when I went to cut this. In this case, you can see here, it cut this bottom card great, perfect, no errors whatsoever. In this top section, you can see that I've lost a few of these pieces. Now, there's two primary reasons for that. My cutting mat is no longer sticky enough to hold the card as it cuts. And in this case, for this paper, it could have been a little bit too much of a cut setting for this. However, I really think it is actually due to my cutting mat being so well used and it's no longer as sticky as it once was. So those pieces are not held in place. And the reason I say that is if I get up close here, it is actually pushing my card stock along as it cuts. So it was cutting at a speed of 13. I could slow the uh, speed down on the cut. That can help. I could also make sure I get a stickier cutting mat because it's not holding in here. And this mat is very well used. So in this case, I'm going to go first to, I need a higher stick cutting mat or I need to brayer my cardstock down. I may also decrease my cut settings just a little bit in this particular case. But the first thing I would go with is my cutting mat is not as sticky. So when I want to remove this from the cutting mat, I'm going to simply grab my plastic sheet, my protective cover. I'm going to flip it over and then I'm going to peel my mat away from my material. Then I'm going to layer my card together and I'll share a couple more examples of this card type. Okay, here are the first couple that I made. The one on the left is cardstock pieces cut out and glued together, and I will put a link in the video description below that shows a little bit of a trick to doing that, to gluing each of those little letters down. And then the next one here is a close-up. This is where the letters are actually cut out of the card base, and I was lazy. I didn't include the little centers, but that's how some of these font styles are these days. Then these next couple are a few variations of hello. One, I cut the letters out and glued to the front, which is the one on the left. And then here's a closer view at the one on the right. It's actually the text cut out of the card base and then I glued a pattern paper behind the text. So it gives it a little different look. And this one actually I think is my favorite. So you really just need to play around with the different fonts and your word. Um, this one I think looked better as a horizontal card versus a vertical card. And then here is all of the ones that I did so far before while I was recording the video and some of the supplies. So I will link those supplies in the description below that I use when I am creating cards or paper crafting products. And I just want to thank you for joining me. And I hope you have learned a lot in this video. We covered so much stuff. Thanks for joining me.